Today I'm going to be covering how to build Gerus and Serus in Godot. Now I'm in this project that has all this stuff in it. None of this is important for the tutorial. I'm just in the project so I could show you something I used a Geru and Seru for. So when building a Geru and Seru, you're going to do var, the variable name. We're just going to do test in this one. Then you're going to do set get. This is going to say Seru Geru. You're going to do um, set test is the standard to have set underscore then the name of your variable and then get test and then you're going to do functions for the setter and the getter so you're going to do func set test this is going to take a value because you're setting it to the value you're going to do test equals value and then you're going to do a function get test this doesn't get passed a value so you're just going to do return test and that's the basics of setting up a test or setting up a setter and getter if you want only a getter you don't need this one here you could do a comma and then get if you only want a setter you could do the setter and then you could get rid of the comma and the get and that'll allow you to do a setter and a getter now some of you might be asking what's the point of a setter and a getter um why not just do test equals new value or something. Well, there is a reason. Um, and that is because this adding the setter and the getter will allow you to do specific things every time a value is changed. Now this set test is actually gonna be called every time you change test, as long as you change it the right way. If you do self.test equals new test, that's going to call the setter. New test isn't clarified, so let's go ahead and just test. So if we set it like this, that's going to call the setter. If we um, get it like this, that's going to call the getter. You could also just call the setter and getter name. Set test. New test. And then also just get test. Now, this is going to allow you to do specific things every time. Like, for example, if you want it to only have this be set to numbers, but you still want it to be a string, then you could do, um, you could check to see if the value passed is an integer or a number. If it is, then you're going to set it. If not, you're just going to return. And then in, in here, you need to make sure you call test equals value. Now, I'm actually going to open up something I added a setter and getter for in this project I'm currently working on to kind of show you one of the uses of setter and getter. And that's actually going to be in this node. Now, this extends it, and the setter and getter is in the one it's extending, so I'm going to go ahead and open the one that it, it, that it is extending from. And I have this, and I'm only doing the set data right now, but I have data. And basically, every time I call to set data, then it calls a set data function. The set data basically just emits signal saying, hey, this is the data, as long as ID isn't equal to negative one. And this is basically going to make sure that the value gets passed a dictionary, set data to the value, and then it's going to emit a signal with that value. That way, the parent could update the data and then it's able to save all the new changes. And you could do all sorts of stuff with these, the setters, the getters, and also in the getter you could actually return something other than the value. It's not standard and people recommend against it. Or you could have every time they get a specific value, then it updates another value. Now these are quite useful and also quite simple. The fact that doing the self.data equals such and such, it's gonna update this is actually really useful and makes so you don't have to keep calling the function you build. So anyways, that's setters and getters in Godot. Hopefully you learned something new from this and I'll see you in the next one.